This keynote is proudly sponsored by Oyster. Danny Page here with you on stage two at Running Remote Online. We're already like five hours into this thing. It's hard to believe time flies. I mean, maybe it's because during my break, I took a nap, but you know, that's, that's beside the point. Um, we're really looking forward to sort of the midday session here in Europe, the afternoon session, the morning session uh, on the East Coast of the US, the early morning session on the West Coast as we continue here with Running Remote Online. Remember everyone, get your profiles put together, add a headline, add your LinkedIn, find all of us, add us on LinkedIn. And just a couple reminders on playback, make sure you're using a Chrome browser right? That's really important. Or use the Hopin mobile app. And additionally, remember, for Spanish and German attendees, you can actually listen to stage one. We're here on stage two, but you can listen to those stages in your native languages, which I think is, is really exciting. Um, I, I'm really happy to welcome in um, one of our partners, the CEO of one of our partners, uh, Oyster HR, um, Tony, Tony Jamus. Um, please come on in, Tony. And I'm just going to read um the the boilerplate for what your company does right but i don't think that begins to describe what you really do and what you're about we had a fascinating conversation in the pre-show oyster is the hr platform for globally distributed companies that is true oyster makes it easy for growing companies to tap the global talent pool and give their remote employees a great experience no matter where they live that is also true but, but Tony, the, the ethos behind this organization, which is in fact a B Corp, which is social progress oriented, um, is, is a whole different ballgame, isn't it? You really see your tool as a way to dramatically change the way work functions globally. Thank you, Danny, for this uh, warm introduction. Very glad to be here today. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think we're we're really excited to to hear what you have to say in terms of um, principles of distributed leadership, and and you know we're certainly excited to see more about Oyster. Remember, register interest in their booth if you hire your first employee uh, through Oyster. They're free for one year. Go see them in their booth. I'm going to hand it over to Tony. Uh, I will be back with questions in about 20 minutes. Here are here are some principles of distributed leadership with one of the great leaders in the space, Tony Jamus. Thank you, Danny. So um, your presence at this conference suggests that you're probably bullish on remote working. So it may surprise you to hear that more than half of leaders believe that the performance of remote worker is lower than office workers. That is according to a 2020 research done by Harvard Business Review. Now that is understandable because COVID-19 have suddenly pushed many leaders into remote management for the very first time, which requires a different skill set than face-to-face -face management. They have been forced to make this transition quickly and for the most part without any training. My name is Tony Jamus, and as Danny explained, I'm the CEO and founder of Oyster, the distributed HR platform that is making hiring someone on the other side of the world as easy as hiring your neighbor. I lead a growing team of nearly 100 people in 40 different countries. Prior to founding Oyster, I was the CEO of Nexmo, a communication API platform, which hired over 600 people in 45 countries. The company is now public on the NASDAQ through the merger with Vonage. And I'm here to convince you that you can dramatically elevate the success of your distributed team by becoming a great distributed leader. Because I have led executive teams in both settings, 
on-prem and distributed, I needed to revisit my leadership style. So I have consulted with a number of experts to inform myself and I brought together some relevant research on distributed leadership. As you could expect, there has been a lot of material generated on remote working best practices, uh, particularly in the last year. Uh, this information has largely been focused on the one-one of remote work, that is important. Um, but far less prevalent has been thoughtful information for leaders who aspire to be effective distributed leaders and who want to understand how they can drive their teams to a new level of performance. That's why when I started Oyster one month prior to the pandemic in January 2020, I connected with Martha Mesnevsky, Professor of Organizational Behavior at Ivy Business School in Canada. Martha has been researching virtual team performance for the last 20 years. And 10 years ago, she was my professor at the IMD Business School. So if we um, look at the agenda, so the following agenda uh, is inspired by Martha academic work and enriched with my real life experience in the last 18 months leading fully distributed high performance team. And what we will cover today is the performance challenges specific to distributed teams. The hygiene factor needed to put your team performance on par with office based teams. And finally, how to unlock the superpowers of distributed team that will allow you to take your team's performance to the next level. So starting with the challenges, according to Marsat research and my year long experiment leading Oyster, I find it harder to build trust and relationships. I find it harder to build a strong culture and I find it harder to get stuff done. You might have noticed that these are the elements of the, found are the foundations of high performance organization. So let's dive into the causes of these challenges, why it is harder to do them. So uh, first let's start with the, the, the hard, harder, why it's harder to build trust and relationships. Uh, and, and the first reason is because in distributed environment, diversity is naturally higher. People are more dispersed geographically. They will have more divergent view of what trust is and the meaning of relationships. That will lead to increasing conflict in the team. Take an example, a Swedish team member with a very non-direct feedback style versus a Dutch uh, team member with a very direct and, and maybe a blunt feedback style. Now in an office, you have more chances to reconcile these differences. But in distributed teams, these differences are non-moderated and non-mitigated. So it becomes critical to, to, to manage them. The other reason that is hard to build trust and relationship is a lack of in-person uh, interactions. Uh, you miss on social interactions around the coffee machine or you miss out on the water cooler conversation uh, and all the emotional signaling that comes with real life and real body language. And these two elements, lack of the high diversity and lack of in-person interaction leads to manager mistrust. So the same Harvard Business Review research showed that manager who cannot see their direct reports sometimes struggle to trust them and indeed uh, they struggle to trust them that their employees are indeed working. So when, when such doubts creep in, managers can start to develop an unreasonable expectation that those team members be available at all times, disrupting their work home balance and causing more job stress. Increasingly employees go into a fight or a flight mode that we're all familiar with. Uh, this in turn could create a, a vicious cycle in which manager mistrust lead to micromanagement, which leads to drop in employee motivation, further impairing their productivity. The takeaway here is that Things that took care of themselves in the office setting now require deliberate thought and the action of leader to make them work. Now let's move on to culture. Why it's harder to build culture in a distributed setting. I was in London a few weeks ago and I saw a van of a B2B coffee provider with the slogan, we make business culture. I smiled because I knew that there's some truth to that. 
when people used to go to the office, they had their ritual. We used to wake up in the morning, get ready, commute, sometimes for over an hour, and stay eight hours or more in the office, and then commute back home. Our life was consumed by work and also our identity. With her research, Martha identified that people, when they work in an office, have bigger overlap between their personal identity and their work identity. And that makes it easier for business leaders to build strong culture. Here I define culture as the shared norms and habits of a team or an organization. But most research uh, we find is around the challenges of getting stuff done, obviously. So I'm going to summarize for you, I'm going to, I'm going to summarize it for you in two areas. Because a team is more dispersed, sometimes in various time zones, that by itself represents a challenge of communication and collaboration. That challenge gets bigger uh, as the tasks become more complex or more cross-functional. And these type of tasks are unfortunately more frequent as you go higher in the organization and into the C-suite. Knowledge sharing is problematic because of, uh, in an office setting, if you need something, you can go and see your next door neighbor and ask for help. But in a distributed team, you can't do that. So people can feel stuck sometimes, especially if they need to ping a colleague on the other side of the world. So since trust culture and getting stuff done are foundation to the team high performance, now we see why it's harder for leader to drive performance in a distributed setting. That's why in order for us, leader of distributed teams to achieve equal performance as our on-prem counterparts, we need to address the three hygiene factors of performance. So addressing these challenges are hygiene factors to achieve equal performance to on-prem teams. And because they are harder in a distributed environment, we either have to deliberately take actions else the chances of overperformance are nil. They are the foundation on which we can build the next step of overperformance and unlock the superpowers of distributed teams. So let's see what you can do to address these hygiene factors of performance. So let's start with building trust and relationships. So this is all about getting a pulse on the organization and constantly resynchronizing it to make sure that the structure and the people stay together. There are two practices I have or I have been implementing in my team. First, I set up frequent and recurrent synchronous one-to-one -one check in meetings. Martha and her research call them heartbeat meetings because they are not about checking on the results, but rather checking on the person. Uh, I remind myself at the beginning of each heartbeat meeting that the goal here is to check on how they are doing on their work and or personal life and for them to use me as a resource. And that these meetings don't require any preparation in advance. It's really about me being present for them, connecting with them, seeing them, hearing them. And I set myself a goal to also learn about how they think, how they see the world, their values, and try to give them an insight into my world too. This in turn removes uncertainty in the relationship and usually leads to a closer, more trusted relationship. The second practice uh, that I, 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 I use is to detect and address conflicts early and often. This is critical for any relationship, as Ray Dalio points out in his book, Principles. He mentioned that it's important to recognize that conflicts are essential for great relationship because they are how people determine whether their principles are aligned and resolve their differences. But it's especially, it's critical in a distributed team where it's harder to detect conflicts and it's harder to build trust and relationship without being in the same location. So be deliberate in solving conflict as early as possible. For instance, uh, if you have an issue with any of your team member, set aside an, a, a synchronous issue on blocking safe discussion with a goal to share and as importantly, listen to the other person's point of view. So, Moving on to uh, culture. So how to build a strong culture in a distributed environment? There are many uh, 
cultural defining values that are required for success for any high performance organization, such as trust, transparency, integrity, and customer centricity. However, we leaders of the distributed team need to add yet another essential value to allow our team to perform as well as in office team. And that value is about measuring output rather than input. A result-driven culture become the foundation of performance in the distributed team. At Oyster, we tell people it does not matter how many hours you put in to do your job, what matter is getting the job done. But not every organization is ready to adopt a result-driven culture. There is some infrastructure and discipline that need to be there, especially in areas of setting clear goals and expectations. At Oyster, we use a method called OKR, Objective Key Result, and using a combination of top-down and bottom-up approach, I set the year's objective and the team define the quarterly key result and their values. Now, moving on to getting stuff done. So, as you recall, one of the challenges in the distributed team is to enable people to get stuff done across various geographies and time zones. As a leader, you need to think carefully about how are you going to empower people to be effective and how you can align your company's success with their success. Now, on the internet, there are lots of knowledge around that area and, and the foundation is to adopt asynchronous mode of communication and collaboration. I'm sure many of you here at this conference are familiar with. At Oyster, we call them the tools and the rules. We are very prescriptive about what, what to use and when. For instance, our default mode of asynchronous communication is Slack, but certain meetings such as all hands, decision, or issue resolution meetings need Zoom. Uh, we also use Loom to fill the gap between spontaneous and low formality idea sharing. For project and task management, we use Google Docs for light and disposable doc, and Notion as a dynamic source of truth and for permanent documentation. I have linked below uh, the How We Work Together doc document uh, that is publicly available. We can also go to our website, Oyster HR, and, and use it and copy it. Uh, feel free to, uh, um, to leverage it. But describing how the team works together is not enough. You need to be disciplined in how you use them and reinforce them across the organization. At Oyster, we want the executive team, or my direct report, to be the role model for the rest of the organization by becoming the best distributed exec team. So we spend higher percentage of our time thinking about how we work together and sharing internally so that we model the way for other teams in the organization. So, so far we've discussed the three challenges of performance in the distributed team trust, culture, and getting stuff done. And some of the recommendation of what you can do to address these. This will get your distributed team performance on par with an office team. Now, let me tell you what you need to do to unlock the superpowers of distributed teams and how you can take your team's performance to the next level and overperform in office teams. So, Compared to when you only work in person, uh, there are four key team processes you can now do even better. And if you do so, you can drive your distributed team to outperform other teams. So the first superpower is about equal participation. Equal participation is one of the best predictors of good team decisions. Asynchronous communication modes level the communication playing field and drive more equal participation. And in the distributed team, who speaks up and who gets heard is less about who has a loud voice or power in the room. It's more about the ideas themselves. For instance, an expressive extrovert may dominate a face-to-face -face meeting, but in an asynchronous discussion, their idea have equal airtime to the reflective introvert. Even status has much less impact on asynchronous communication. In a regular face-to-face -face meeting, there are all kinds of nonverbal signals about who should speak when. These are much less evident in distributed setting, freeing up the input of less powerful people. And with more participation, your team will get more ideas, enabling better decision making. The second superpower is less groupthink. Now, another predictor of good decision, good team decision 
is this process of exploring many ideas before committing to one. Now, in a face-to-face -face meeting, there is one conversation at a time. At some point, several people start to comment on a particular idea, and it begins to dominate the discussion. Before you know it, that idea has support, and other ideas get lost, even if they're good. This is what sometimes we call groupthink. On the contrary, with asynchronous collaboration, we can have many conversations at the same time without losing any of them. This process takes good ideas and turns them into good decision, good decision making. Now, let's move on to the third superpower, which is better conflict resolution. You know all these non-verbals that we love so much in the face-to-face -face communication? Well, sometimes they actually get into the way. Uh, in Marsat's research, in the pre-Zoom era, the highest performance team never once addressed, addressed conflict in person. They always discussed problems on the phone. When you explore this more, it's not as counterintuitive as it seems. In difficult conversation, we often get emotional as we are about to say what we need to say. And the other person can see that, and that might make them anxious. And that cycle builds, and we say or hear things that aren't intended. Ironically, in a virtual meeting where we are not in the same place, like, like this one, for instance, uh, we are less emotionally triggered. We can ignore our face getting hot, or we can pose for a breath before we respond. And actually now, you know, let me take a breath now. And uh, because I'm less afraid that if I make a mistake, you're going to jump and eat me alive. Okay, so there is less of these um, fight or flight responses uh, that are triggered in an in-person meeting. Now, the trust we have built with people with, high, with, with the hygiene factors is especially important here because without trust, virtual conflict resolution does spiral into misunderstanding and blame. When the team is solid, this way of communicating becomes a huge driver of overperformance. Uh, the fourth superpower is, is really around better leadership development. Good distributed teams develop the leadership capabilities of their team members better than in office team. As we've learned, leading a distributed team is more difficult than leading an office-based team. There is simply more to manage. You have not only to manage the work, but also how the work gets done. We also have to spend more time and effort building trust and culture. That's why high-performance distributed teams share more leadership. To share more leadership, we need to provide both clear direction uh, on the strategy and active coaching. This exposes your team member to more of the bigger picture and provides feedback and advice about their input. It's a great way to develop your next generation of leaders. Now, to, to recap a bit, um, it's understandable that leaders are concerned about the performance of their distributed teams. Leaders have been pushed by the pandemic to solve a very, diff very difficult problem. Uh, it's harder to build trust, it's harder to build culture, and it's harder to get stuff done. And it happens that these are the foundations of high performance. That's why we leader, we owe it to our teams to be more deliberate in addressing these three hygiene factors so that we can give them the chance to perform as good as uh, we used to do in, in an office. And only then you can unlock real superpowers in areas of equal participation, less groupthink, better conflict resolution, and next-gen leadership development. Now, what did not tell you yet that you can do all of this and still fail to outperform the office? Because unless your goal is to become the best remote leader of your organization, it won't, it won't work. It starts with you. Thank you for listening. Yeah, Tony, there really is a uh, responsibility here in some ways. Oh my gosh, my, my background exposed. You see the, you see the truth behind them. Um, you see the yeah. truth in the studio. Um, Tony, talk about that responsibility a little bit more, can you? Uh, you know, people come to conferences like this and they really want something actionable from day one right like how is that responsibility what, what, what can you do right now 
um, today in the middle of your work day with your distributed team to, you know, sort of accept that responsibility of being a better leader and manager? Yeah, I think you have to, I think that the, the biggest thing you can do is to shift in your brain to change the chip is why, what is the role of a leader? And, um, and, 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 and you need to think about it as you are a platform to enable others in your organization to succeed and grow and, and, and be effective. Um, and, uh, and that's, a, that's a kind of a, a dramatic shift that you need to do. And, and uh, you know, at Oyster, we use a servant leader uh, concept where you are at the service of right. your organization and your team. Well, I mean, that's also a big part of your business. And, and I, I'm, I'm about being a servant in some ways. I'm a total geek on B Corps, right? What does it mean for your company to be a B Corp? What are, what are you doing to sort of like justify that status and, and carve out your social mission? Yeah. So, so B Corp, uh, for people who don't know, it's like, it's like a benefit. Um, it's called Benefit Corporation. Uh, it's a status that's given by, uh, by uh, in the U.S. for corporations that are embedding the mission into into their legal status, uh, and and for Oyster is is more than that. It's really about why we exist as an organization. It's our raison d'être. Uh, we are here to remove the barriers uh, to to cross border employment, so people around the world can can participate in, in the global economy, and companies can hire people anywhere in the world, and uh, and it's actually. It's, it starts by who we hire. So everybody that we hire, we, we, we want them to be aligned uh, on that mission. And, and it also uh, gets into uh, our strategy and our, uh, the product we build and how we build them. So for instance, we, uh, we um, just to give an example, we are open sourcing a lot of our, our work uh, in terms of labor laws and, and uh, um, so that everybody can come and actually uh, use them uh, for free. Uh, because we don't necessarily necessarily want them uh, to use Oyster. They can use any 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 uh, uh, framework uh, as long as actually they can hire people in other countries. Uh, you know, part of my uh, my uh, uh, presentation today is to empower leaders to believe that uh, having a distributed team is actually uh, higher performance than having an office team, and that goes a long way uh, to to foster uh, that thinking in the world. Here's another question. That framework that you shared, the superpowers, you know, did you build that before Oyster or has it been constructed organically within your organization? Yeah, so it, it, has, been, it has been more organically uh, uh, constructed, something that we've, we've noticed. And, uh, and, uh, and actually I worked with Martha, who's a researcher on, on uh, uh, on um, virtual teams, we used to call them virtual teams uh, 20 years ago, and, um, and 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 the work I did with Martha enabled me to be more aware of these superpowers and actually rediscover more and more of these superpowers every day. Um, you know, one one shout out especially is from Melbourne, Australia, Elise. Um, is uh, tuning in at 11 p.m. Friday night, and she said that she was really captivated by this this talk specifically. Um, she says, "I trust my team to do their jobs. That's why I hired them." And I think um, that's that's the cornerstone, right? If there is is one foundational component to those superpowers, it all begins with trust, doesn't it? That's at least the vibe I got from what you were saying. Absolutely. I mean, if you don't have trust, I mean uh everything else doesn't matter right i mean i mean yeah. and 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 when we were in an office setting uh, actually that wasn't being in an office wasn't a great place to build trust right i mean because right. you you could see people and and your brain could interpret could actually confuse presence with with output and and now when you have that absence of 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 seeing people then the real trust and the real personal work starts Right, right. Um, it, it, that's when the work starts. Is when the trust exists. That is, that's so. That's so well said, Tony Jamus. Uh, Tony, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. We obviously are are so happy to be aligned with Oyster HR and really interested in what you're doing for the true future of global work. Thanks, Tony. Thank you, Danny, for having me here.